All right, we got a story on this one, guys. York package unit, York package unit, and I think this one's a Daikin. Do the setting here. So I don't know when this Daikin is from. Look, at this one's brand new, 2024. Huh. Both of these units, these two York five-ton package units were installed in 2019 because the building was hot, right? And so the company that installed them has since been acquired. But Terpy, they were a big company in San Diego. I'd say fairly reputable uh, as far as I would see Terpy. Installed these units. Apparently that didn't solve the problem. So they had Tarpy come several times and then Tarpy just said, hey, the units are working fine. That's it, right? Um, so then they, I guess Tarpy gets bought out a few years later. They stopped using, they didn't move over to uh, ARS, the company who bought them. And a couple years ago, um, they started using a new company. They had this new company come out New company says, hey, you need to start changing your filters. You need to do maintenance. You need, uh, and they're like, it's always hot in here. It's always hot. They're like, yeah, you need to do some maintenance. They're like, okay, cool. Let's, let's get on a maintenance plan. So they get on a filter schedule, right? And it's still always hot, right? You'll see where I'm going with this. And so they say, hey, it's still always hot. We're changing our filters. What do we got to do? So that's where these come in. This guy right here, okay, Comfort Bros. They put their name on it. Daikin one and a half ton unit. So they said, hey, it doesn't cool down enough. We have a solution for you. Spend 30 grand, so they said 30 something grand, and let's add these two mini splits. We're gonna need new refrigerant lines, roof penetrations, electrical circuits, and uh, you need, you just don't have enough BTUs. We need to add more. All right, let's throw more at it. Three tons. So uh, four and a half tons of cooling was added. Okay, so they said, you know, like that, that's, our, that's your solution. Like you don't have enough output. So you've got five, five, three, um, your business needs more. So let's add four and a half more tons in the form of mini splits. It's gonna solve your problem, okay? Didn't solve the problem. <laughs> so um, they called me on a Saturday night and said, or they said, hey, do you guys do emergency service? And I said, sure. Came out on this one. Um, Cause they said they knew that this one, this one is usually for the office area. And so they knew that this one wasn't working. I said, hey, it, does, it, it always blows cold. It's not blowing cold. Um, blow, blower motor's bad. Um, it took like a few days to get it in because it's, they use their communicating blowers and the blower wheel was seized and blah, blah, blah. But we got it, it's, it's working today. Um, and I was like, man, when I was walking through this, up to this roof, I was like, it is hot in here. I was like, it's not. I told them that, I was like, is it always hot in here? And they're like, it's always hot. And I said, like it doesn't feel, it didn't feel warm. It felt like it was heating in the building. And I'm like, have you had anybody look at your units? They're like, yeah, you know, we're on a maintenance plan. And they said, but the building has never cooled down, never in the last six years. We got these AC units and they just don't keep up. This unit right here, it was operating in heat because the thermostat wasn't programmed right. So um, I reprogrammed the thermostat and uh, building's cold. <laughs> so uh, now, now let's think about this. So how did this go so unnoticed? This unit, like, so we got three package units, one, two, three. So um, this unit, the ductwork is way up high in the rafters. All the other ones go to the room. So all the other ones were probably blowing cold. I don't know why that one got replaced after they probably, that one was probably the the older one or something. And so they replaced it because they thought it was the guilty party. Um, but so they had 13 tons total, three, five, five. And 
um, when they would turn the AC on, this thing, this thing would blow out heat. So, um, and it wouldn't, because it never hits that set temp, it will never turn off. So it will be blowing out a, a constant five tons at all times of heat. And uh, so in the summertime, it's just constantly blowing heat, constantly blowing heat right up into the rafters, keeping the top of that building super hot. And then that one, three tons, and that one, five tons, is not only fighting environmental factors, I know it's cloudy today, but like sun and just exterior heat, but now it's also fighting a five ton internal load in addition to all the other internal loads in the building. Like, do you think it's gonna keep up? No. So. Well, the other companies they said hey let's add more so they added four and a half more tons just enough to maybe counteract the five tons that was coming in and now now we're left with about eight tons of cooling still and it's still just piping hot in this building it's like 80 to 80 something degrees in the nighttime and so um no i don't know how this went so unnoticed but they've been doing regular maintenance they've been through i think three companies um it, like they've been trying to get the problem fixed, but evidently, um, like there's been, there's other issues that I've noticed, but um, we have run into other problems. Like this motor seizes up cause it has to run full time to try and counteract that one now. So the, these units are all running nonstop. Um, and uh, you know, in San Diego, we have such high electric rates. I, I would venture that they've probably spent like in excess of $10,000 on their electric bills plus the 30 something thousand dollars they spent on these mini splits so yeah and do i think that that price for those mini splits is justified i don't think so not for what they got this is like a simple daikin unit you know like not anything crazy so i don't think i i mean i don't know the exact model but it's like this isn't the whole install is not even up to code um local cold code here at least so um yeah do i think that they got their money's worth no but uh like i guess my my point here is pretty much just like it, it does matter who you use especially not only for service but also for install um that final product especially in commercial it's like if uh if you don't if the like lots of time it's not getting checked um like there's no one on site that's gonna know HVAC for the building besides the company installing it. So you're trusting them to do a good job. And uh, it's if it's for a house, then it's probably gonna get noticed. But in this case, like this unit, since it's, it was so high up, no one realized, and that's not like the three HVAC companies and all the staff, no one realized this thing was blowing hot air for six years. And so, and the only reason I noticed is because I actually came over here, I noticed that the inside was hot and I walked over and put my hand over top and realized it was blowing out cold air out the top, not the hot air it should. So then when I opened this up, the air temperature, the intake temp up in the rafters, I would guess was probably like 100 degrees inside. If not, it was like, it was piping hot inside of the rafters um it, it was it, i would guess it, it was in excess of 100 degrees um coming into the unit because it was just heating up and all the heat rises so the top of the building is now so hot that obviously that one and that one aren't going to be able to do anything about it so yeah kind of crazy I, I can't say i've seen anything i've seen other stuff um kind of like this but usually it gets caught in a year or two not <laughs> six years in um and uh i mean the amount of money that they probably spent like mini splits electric bills um unnecessary maintenance i mean this motor probably wouldn't have failed in the time frame it did I mean, I mean i know that these york communicating motors do like to fail but usually that's around like 10 years not six um and these these units i would guess both this one and this one actually all three of these units probably that one over there too oh no this one's new so maybe it, it hasn't but these two definitely um, are gonna have shortened lifespans because of uh, the wear and tear that they've now seen. They probably haven't ever shut off. Um, they do have economizers, so maybe uh, maybe that economizer over here was working. Um, but I don't like the way they have this economizer set up either way, so it's kind of, I mean, I don't know. That's our fresh air. So, yeah. Um, I don't think the economizers are set up because I was here pretty late and it was kind of cool out and uh this compressor was still going so um yeah i just thought this was an interesting 
like a little case study thing in terms of quality install and quality service work. I think I'm probably the 20th, 30th HVAC guy here since, uh, since these units were installed, if not more. And uh, no one else really took the time to um, figure out what was going on. Now that it's working, they're stoked. They're like, what? Uh, but like $50,000 later and stoked isn't, uh, you know, like at least they're happy it's working, but obviously uh, unenthused with uh, the amount of money that they spent to get to this point. So anyway, I'm out.